All right, and we're back with some more Silent Hill 2. Gonna be doing the apartment level in this one. Now, this is one part of the game I don't like in terms of design, if only because it relies on a lot of scripting. So we need to get a flashlight. And god damn, this is awesome. The first time I played this game, this is genuinely unsettling. Now, enemies also are attracted to light sources, so... You want to keep that in mind. Also, notice how this looks a lot like... A certain somebody we have in our inventory, Ms. Mary! So, go ahead and pick up the flashlight. And that is the mannequin enemy. I'm just gonna ignore it for the most part. I have no real reason to kill the enemies, honestly. I feel kind of bad for a lot of them. I think most people do. So, anyways. They are kind of dangerous, but uh, it just depends on what you want to fight them or not. You can see what I mean. I'm gonna pick up these handgun bullets and just walk past the... Uh, the figure there. So down there is a dead end, but I want to show you something really cool. So notice how our radio is going nuts, right? There's these dudes over here, or gals. Um, also notice that their design is very similar to straight jackets, or they're stuck in their own skin. It's usually interpreted that they are a representation of James's lust on top of um, the fact that enemies are like based on his wife's sicknesses. Um, as someone who's suffered with a lot of illnesses, that's kind of how it feels sometimes. You are stuck in your own body like it's a, a prison. So notice how if we approach the mannequin with when it's not aggro, there's no static, but... Yeah, so they have a camouflage technique. I really like that. It's very subtle, but it's... it's I don't know. There's little things in this game that make it just stand out for me. So now that we have the flashlight, we can actually interact with things. We can also look at our map inside here. If you don't have the flashlight, you can't actually look at your map. It's a little dumb because this looks like it's got some ambient lighting already. Now, this is a puzzle location. We're going to come back here in a minute. So you have to do all these things in an exact order to actually finish this section of the game, which a lot of people don't like. I thought it's fine the first time I played it. It wasn't too cryptic. But you do need the flashlight to pick up items, and also, here's a key. And let's try to pick it up. Mm. Ow! Ha <laughs> ha! Hey, wait! Damn it! So, yeah, there's a random human being in there. A small child, unfortunately, so that was weird. First time you play that, that actually puts you really on edge, I feel. And also, God, I love the music in this area. So, now we can go ahead and pick up the handgun. This is generally interpreted as a Japan joke, saying how they think it's hilarious how easy it is for people in America to get firearms. I've always interpreted it that way, too. Um, so, yeah, you do need to have the flashlight to get that item. You have to have it on to interact with doors that need keys, and you need to use it uh, to pick up items in general. It's a little bit of a dumb mechanic, but it makes some semblance of sense, I guess. And also, we gotta go up here again. Oh no, someone's having some bad kink shaming. So, yeah, this is required. You need to have that event script to do this. And this is where the series exploded in popularity. A certain somebody is up there. I think most people know who that is by now, but we're just going to leave it alone. That is Pyramid Head. We all know he's a mascot of the series of some sorts nowadays. Oh my god. Who could have... Yeah, it's a metaphor. Turn the TV off, James. So we got the room key to 202. Now, there's a puzzle in this room, we just can't solve it yet. And look at that, Pyramid Head's gone! Oh, he's probably in a better place. So, you can just kind of brush past enemies like that. Very few enemies in this game actually can hurt you when you're walking past them, which is why I'm comfortable doing that. The lying figures in particular are the easiest ones to deal with like that. So, now we can go in here, and I really like this little subtle detail. Notice how there's red in the sink, and there's green in here. I don't really particularly know why they decided to do this, but I do understand the motif in this room. So it's too dark to tell for sure, but I think there's something on the other side of the hole. 
investigate. So notice there's also butterflies. Butterflies are a common symbol of rebirth in actual mythology. <gasps> and we get the clock key. So, yeah, this room is probably what I've always interpreted as, like, him subtly wanting to be reborn from his trauma. I don't know. It's That room is a bit vague, so we need to go down there at the very end of this section, but we're not going to go there just yet. we got to go back down to the clock room, which is over here. So you can probably be like, why don't you kill that enemy? I really don't have any reason to do so. I only usually kill the nurse enemies because they're actually dangerous. So now that we have the clock key, this changes depending on the difficulty, by the way. But we're going to go ahead and use the key on this. If I can find the damn thing. There we go. So why James couldn't just break it open? I don't know, dude. I didn't design the game. But we need to have the clock read 9.15. Oh, I know. Oh, millennials couldn't figure this puzzle out. This is too big brain because they have their damn digital phones. Life was hard back in the day. We had to actually know how to read time. Yeah, I'm sure somebody's thought that before. This brain buster of a puzzle here. So, you'll hear the clock make a noise. That's how you know it's actually active. Now, oh, I don't want to fidget with it. The way you figure this puzzle out is the notches. Henry, Mildred, Scott hours, minutes, seconds. That's how you figure that out the first time you play it. And there's writing, the scars from the past shall remove the nail that stops the time. You have to do this in order to actually push the clock out of the way. And man, you have no idea how weird it is to not skip these cutscenes. <laughs> uh, so, anywho. Now we're going to go on the other section. There's a save point there. I don't really need it. To get a... 10 star rank you have to only save the game twice which I think the least I've done is one but I was also playing on normal so it's not really the same so we can go on the other side where pyramid head was and we can go upstairs downstairs we can't actually activate yet now this part I think everybody who's played or heard of Silent Hill is probably familiar with the next part coming up here in a moment I think it's down this next door So yeah, that is probably the one scene I think most people have like heard of at least in Silent Hill, the series. Um, I've always interpreted that as Pyramid Head showing James, this is what I can do, this is what I feel, I'm a big fucking deal, and uh, I could break you in half if I tried. So I've always liked that scene. It's also a reference to the film Blue Velvet where a guy watches a chick get violated. Um, Quite an uncomfortable scene. Uh, um, so, yeah, there's that. And I like people that say, actually, I think one of the developers of the game stated, oh, well, you know, it's not really rape, but your brain fills in the blanks, and that's what makes it creepy. 
Which is actually very true. I think that's what makes it interesting. There's no gross penetration. Your brain just knows psychology-wise it's just wrong. And I think that's really impactful. Anyways, um, so yeah, we can grab that key, and now we can actually go around the other side. And uh, yeah, that scene also I think is important because it shows James will just kind of follow Pyramid Head. And I've always interpreted him as not as a... He's still awful, but by the way, can juice! What'd you expect to be down here? Fucking money or something? Um, no, I've always interpreted Pyramid Head as leading James. I know that's a common theory, but it makes sense to me. We'll see why that goes on later. I think if he wanted to kill him, he easily could, and we'll explain that later too. So yeah, now we have the can juice, and we also have the fire escape key. So before, I'm just gonna save myself some time. Like I said, this is where you use the courtyard key as well. That's what we got in the uh, closet there. Um, you do need to activate these things in certain orders. That's the other thing I was going to say too. So now we can go over here to the trash chute. And how do you think we're going to get this next key? By putting the canned juice in there, silly. Duh. <sighs> what do you think I was going to do? Push the stick in there and push it down the chute? Fucking what are you thinking, man? That's using brain logic. That would be a Resident Evil puzzle. This is Silent Hill, damn it. We're sophisticated, right? <laughs> so, yeah. That's the uh, infamous can juice puzzle. There's not very many insane puzzles in this game, I will say. I know Silent Hill 3 has some insane shit. So, the bag is torn and the contents are strewn all over. Old man coin. What's this? Some e-magazine? The police announced today that Walter Sullivan, who was arrested on the 18th of this month for the brutal murder of Billy Locaine and his sister Miriam, committed suicide in his jail cell early on the morning of the 22nd. According to the police statement, Sullivan used a soup spoon to stab himself in the neck, severing the carotid artery. By the time the guard discovered him, Sullivan was a... was dead, not was a dead. From blood loss, the spoon buried two inches in his neck. In a court, an old schoolmate of Walter Sullivan's from his hometown of Pleasant River said, He didn't look like the type of guy who would kill kids. But I do remember that just before they arrested him, he was blurting out all sorts of strange stuff like, He's trying to kill me! He's trying to punish me! The monster! The red devil! Forgive me! I did it! But it wasn't me! The schoolmate then added, I guess now that I think of it, he was kind of crazy. So, yeah, that's not fun. Um, I believe Sullivan comes up in the story of this game one other time later on, but it's also, I believe, in the room he's part of the main story in that, so we're gonna go ahead and use the courtyard key, and if you're like, Seth, kill some fucking monsters already, I'll get to it, don't worry, your bloodbath will be satiated eventually, okay? So, I'm just gonna shoot these ones to get them on the ground and out of my way. Look at these pro dodges, I'd like to point out. Um, and me wasting a... Oh, man, I got cocky. That's my fault. So, we need to get to this baby carrier here. And that one's not dead, I'm pretty sure. So, I'm just gonna leave it alone. Um, yeah, it's fine. So, essentially, if an enemy falls on the ground, you can do the almighty death stomp on them and that kills them. That's considered a melee kill. If you kill an enemy with a firearm exclusively, that's considered a firearm kill. You need to have 75 of each to get the uh, best ending in the game. And that is just fucking insane. You'll want to use the shotgun for that, but we're not going to deal with that till much later. So we'll go in here and we're actually going to pick up a couple of items as well. So you'll notice how James actually follows where the uh, enemy falls down to. That's how I know the enemy's on the ground. That's what I'm generally doing. And I'll keep my health in top shape just to make sure I get the uh, best possible outcome for the endings as well. Now, this is also... Like I said, I'll show you how to get the rebirth ending. There's a couple of items that we need to get in this specific part of the game. So, this also is a required portion of the game to do. So, uh, someone's chunking up chunks. It's sad because I genuinely think people vomiting is kind of funny. So, oh dear, it's a dead thing. What the... Who could have done this? Also notice that model gets reused later on in the game too. Oh man, crack kills. It wasn't me. 
Do what? I didn't do anything. I, I swear. He was like this when I got here. <coughs> my, uh, my name's James. <coughs> James Sunderland. Um, Eddie. <coughs> Eddie. <coughs> Who's that dead guy in the kitchen? I didn't do it. I swear I didn't kill anybody. <coughs> You're not friends with that red <coughs> pyramid. <coughs> Red Pyramid thing? I don't know what you're talking about. Honest. But I did see some weird looking monsters. They scared the hell out of me, so I ran in here. Well, I guess this place isn't too safe either. What happened here anyway? Uh, I, I told you, I don't know. I'm not even from this town. I just. I just... You too, huh? Something just brought you here, right? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Well, whatever it is, I think you better get out of here soon. Yeah, you're right. What about you? I'll leave as soon as I'm done here. Eddie, be careful. James, I... I, um... You be careful, too. So yeah, Eddie's not exactly, uh, stable-sounding and or very healthy. If we go back in here, we can interact with him again, but I'm not gonna do that. We can also go in this room here. You can see that we have, uh, I think that says Fade Blair. Not really sure what the graffiti, Live Fade Blair, not really sure. But you can see uh, a lot of football stuff, rest in peace, you know, lots of weird shit in here. There's also a football down here, so keep that in mind as we get into the, uh, the end game of Silent Hill 2. So you do need to trigger that cutscene because if you don't, you won't be able to get uh, the uh, next portion unlocked. James will be like, I need to do something! And it's it's really odd. I've never liked that inclusion, personally. So, yeah, we gotta go back upstairs, though. If you try to leave, um, like, through into the town area, he'll actually say, I think I need to do something as well. So you can't just go back in the street. So you can't play uh, Homeless Man Simulator 2023. I'm sorry, that's just not a part of the game, unfortunately. So go ahead and use the fire escape key. There is no fire escape outside the door. Maybe they knocked it down when they built the building next door. I think I can get into the building next door if I go through the window in front of me. Yeah, OSHA really didn't care when they built this place. Understandable. I don't think Silent Hill has good anything, really. So, this room also has this little puzzle here. Uh, looks like there's something stuck inside the toilet. Take it out? Why not? Sure. Let's just stick our hand in there. It looks like a wallet. There's some kind of memo in it. This is a randomly generated code um, for the, what's it called over here? There's a little safe in this room. I'm not going to open it up, it just has handgun bullets in it. I actually don't need it. Um, I'd also like to point out, everyone wonders, why the hell does James do that? I've always interpreted it as James does that because he has nothing to live for and he has no fucking care in the world anymore at this point. So, and as somebody who used to be dissociated, like, really hard, um, yeah, you just do shit after a while out of impulse and less about the actual importance of it. It's quite depressing, really. Um, that's why I'm like, yeah, this game really does encapsulate a lot of stuff. So we need to get this door open, but we can't go in there just yet. We need to do a couple of things, because this is Silent Hill, damn it. Now, we need to go down here instead of up. Up doesn't actually have anything. And when we play as Maria... This uh, section is actually important, but we're not doing that right now. So, you can hear that little, like, clockwork kind of sound. 
That's actually... Oh, there they are. They're the uh, cockroaches. Um, they're very fucking irritating. You can give them the death stomp. Um, I recommend doing that. You can shoot them as well, uh, because... What kind of person wouldn't shoot a football-sized fucking cockroach, honestly? Um, they don't do a lot of damage. They're mainly just an annoying enemy at this point. Um, I am taking a little bit of damage, and it's just because of the cockroaches. Um, they... Requirements to get an A ranking, basically, or S ranking, I guess. Um, you need to take less than a thousand points of... It's either a thousand or seven hundred points of damage. The least I've ever taken was about 350 or some weird number like that. It was very little. So, this is also where you find the White Chrism. This is for the Rebirth ending. You can only get that in a New Game Plus. Um, so, this is also the coin puzzle we're looking to solve. And there's also a save station over here. Save station? Did I really say that? Oh, Jesus. Um, so, yeah. That's where that's at. Did I already go? Oh, that's right. On the map just yet. I ignored it. Um, I don't need it personally, like I said. Also, keep in mind the motif of this wall. Um, whenever we deal with Angela. This comes up later in the game as well. Also, a very, very sad and neglected teddy bear. That's not cool. Someone needs to pick that up and give it a happy little home, right? So we can go in here. Oh, it's you. Yeah, I'm James. Angela. Angela, okay. I don't know what you're planning, but there's always another way. Really? But you're the same as me. It's easier just to run. Besides, is what we deserve. No, I'm not like you. Are you afraid? I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Did you find your mother? Not yet. She's not anywhere. Did she live in this apartment building? I don't know. So, all you know is she lived in this town. What did you say? that well I just figured cuz this is where you're looking for her how else would I know yeah am I right I'm so tired so why did you come to this town anyway I, I I'm sorry did... did you find the person you're looking for? Not yet. Her name's Mary. She's my wife. I... I'm sorry. It's okay. Anyway... She's dead. I don't know why I think she's here. She is dead? Don't worry. I'm not crazy. <laughs> At least, I don't think so. Uh, I've got to find my mama. Should I go with you? This town's dangerous. Now I know what you meant back there in the cemetery. I'll be okay by myself. Besides, i just slow you down. What about... That. Will you hold it for me? Sure. No problem. If I kept it, I'm not sure what I might do. No! Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I'd be bad. Please don't.
So yeah, and we can pick up the prisoner coin. And uh, yeah, if you use the knife, like the photo of Mary, if I examine it, that actually increases your chances of getting the in water ending as well. I'm going to cut the video right here just so it doesn't get too long, and I'll see you in the next one.